So it goes without saying that a keyboard is pretty vital to gaming if you're on PC. And most of us on play on PC. We are on PCs. Yes. So if you've followed us here on our YouTube channel, you've probably seen a couple of videos discussing different uh, technology um, in and around PCs. And some of them ha has been pretty complex. Uh, we've discussed processes yeah. uh, mm -hmm. previously. This one is a tad more simple. Yes. Today, we are gonna be discussing and looking into keyboards. So, can you walk me through what a keyboard actually is? Well, a keyboard is a HID or human interface de device, which is meant to put in an input from your keyboard to your PC. So whatever you, you type on your keyboard will be mirrored back on your PC. Very simple like that. So if you press the W, you'll see a W. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So a keyboard, it consists of what exactly? Well, a keyboard is in itself, like one, one of the things that you see in front of us, but it consists of uh, three main components. There's a PCB, which is the main controller of everything. Yeah, you brought some... Uh... Yes, I got some and we will get to that. Okay. Um, you have the, the switches, which are the ones that uh, mix the connection. When uh -huh. you press something, it will go over there. And then you have the keycaps, which is the, the actual thing that you are touching in the end. So the keycaps that we have over here. Okay. All right. So that's, that sounds pretty simple. Very simple. And it is actually pretty simple. Um, even if you have whatever keyboard that you have at home will not make you a better or worse gamer in, 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 in any sense as long as it puts in the input at a good delay okay. which means as a, a low delay as, as possible yeah okay yeah. and as far as i understand most keyboards are pretty fast yes in terms of delay most of them are unless you change to a bluetooth where you can sometimes get a delay. Okay. It does not matter if you use a Bluetooth for, let's say, Word or let's, Civilization, as you mentioned earlier. Right, but for, uh, but for fast, fast uh, pacing games okay. or when you have to have an instant uh, feedback, okay. it's important. All right. It's actually very important. Good, yeah. good. And that's why we still see wired keyboards. Yes. Or wire, regular wireless keyboards can actually also work. Can also work, Unless yeah. we're going Bluetooth. Unless we're going Bluetooth. All right. So far, so good. Yeah. So we have in front of us a load of different keyboards. And the reason we have that is partially because we have some ourselves that we've made. Stuff like this. We also I'm have sure others that we sell in uh, on a web shop. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of keyboard enthusiasts in this company. Yes. Yourself included. Myself included, yes. And uh, what is there to be enthusiastic about? Well, when it comes to keyboard, most of us, um, when you are into the, into the hobby of keyboards, custom keyboards, it's about the feeling, like what color switch that you have, mm -hmm. uh, the weight of the switches and the sound of the switches is one of the main components. The second component is the size and shape. So you can see here we have different shapes and they have different um, sizes as yeah. well, um, which can benefit you in, in some ways. Let's say you have a small desk, you could benefit from having a smaller keyboard. Okay. Uh, but if you work in an office environment and you need the numpad, well, it's very important for you to have the numpad. Let's, let's stick with the switches for one. Our Shark Gaming Venator keyboard, it comes with two different switches. Mm -hmm. We have the red switches, red kill switches, yep. and brown kill switches. Yes. So, switches are, can you show, show the ones we have here so that people know what yes. the switches are? Switches are those behind the keycaps. Behind the, the keycaps. The ones has like a little feedback here. Okay. And when you press that down, there's a connection that goes into the... And, and they are different, so these are red... Yes. Red kill switches? Yes. Good. So there's three main components of switches. Uh -huh. You have the linear, which are the ones that just go straight down. There's no feedback in any ways. Okay. You have a tactile, which has a small bump. And then you have the clickies, where there's a sharp bump, where you can have an audible feedback on it. You can all, all of these are, of course, audible, but they have different so, kinds of sound. So let's see if we can hear the difference between a... Yeah. 
a that's a red linear switch. That's a red linear switch. And these are white clicky. White clicky. And then I have some tactiles. I can maybe use uh, this one. So you can hear there's still an audible one. This is because it has a long stem. That the stem of the switches also make a difference on the sound. Before I started working here, I had no investment in keyboards at all. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I didn't even have a mechanical at home. Now these are all mechanical keyboards. Most of them are, except for that one. Except for this one. Yes. So what is this? This is a membrane keyboard. Membrane keyboard. It does not have a switch like any of these has. Um, it's more built into the PCB with a plastic cap. Okay. Uh, like a soft plastic cap that, that makes the connection. Okay. So when you press that down, there's a plastic metal that makes the connection. So yeah. they are less customizable. And, and the reason you see mechanical keyboards in mm. gaming is because you have more ways of customizing it or because they are, no, are they considered um, better? The, the, the way you can describe like a membrane over a mechanical switches is the consistency of the click. Okay. So with a mechanical, you know when the feedback is happening most of the time. You know when you are clicking it. You, you also know it on the membrane, but the machine behind it, the chip that controls it, is more aligned towards the mechanical because there's a hardwire connection that makes this uh, work. So you're more guaranteed the correct information yes. is being transferred to the computer when using mechanical. So their membrane can do the same, yeah. You have also some uh, membranes which are very high end okay. um, and also has a very good feedback. All right. But generally, before uh, uh, Cherry actually came out and, and made the mechanical switches way back when, it's almost 40 years ago now, that mechanical switches really started up. Membrane had a reputation of being inconsistent. These are the cherry one, the original ones, mm -hmm. more or less. And then behind here, I have a, a little selection of uh, mechanical switches from other manufacturers. All right. And you can get up to, I think there's over 300 different kinds of switches today. Wow. So the switch thing as you mentioned before is, is also very much a personal preference yes. thing now i have i use this uh with these white kill switches yeah. at my desk and i love it i love the feedback i love the sound uh, my colleagues not so much <laughs> but, <laughs> but but it is it is a very noisy keyboard compared to let's say the red switches or yeah. some of these as well yeah uh, you can find some that are more noisy yes but um uh, so for, for me it's the uh, it's the clicky feedback that i get so i'm sh i'm sure that the keyboard has registered yeah. my 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 touch my input and so i know exactly when i'm putting enough pressure on it and that's a personal preference to me many people say that linear is better for for gaming uh, because it, you can press fast, which oh. you can on linear. You can press fast, you don't need to feel that tactile bump all the time. So okay. when you play something like an MMO game, and you have to use spam the same abilities again and again and again. Linear could in that uh, sense actually be better for you. All oh, right. Uh, okay. But if you play like a tactical shooter, and you need to know when are you making the counter strafe, when you move from one side, you stop and then you move to the other side, it's very nice to know the feeling of when you are moving back oh, okay. in your fingers. And that's not always easy to feel on a linear, but it is on a tactile, and it is very noticeable and clicky. That switches. Uh, that's that switches. <laughs> um, so what I'm also noticing is that we have many different sizes mm -hmm. on keyboards here. You mentioned before that uh, numpads. This this one has a numpad, and yes. uh, for work at least, I like the fact that uh, we have num a numpad mm -hmm. here. But many of the other ones we see here are uh, are smaller. This one doesn't have a numpad. Yes. So we have like the full size, which is the standard one. And we also have like a, a smaller full size, which is called an 1800, where they just compress all this together. You still have the numpad. Okay. And then we go TKL, which means 10 k which means no numpad. So this is a TKL. Yes. Below that, we get to a 75, 65, and then 60, 40, and then a 1%. A 1% is just a micro pad with one switch on. <laughs> it exists and people actually go up uh, into making like a custom A 1%. custom 1%? Yes. Wow. So okay. you can go all the way from full size. Uh, I've even seen 
a, a triple full size keyboard built into one. So yeah, <laughs> needless to say, you can go completely crazy. When you uh, get into the custom, yes, you can yeah. go com completely crazy, but for gaming purposes, it really does not matter. Okay. It's a personal preference thing. Right. Yes. Before I met you and Henrik from our uh, production, from production, yeah. who is a huge custom keyboard fan, we actually borrowed a couple of uh, of these ones from him. Uh, I didn't know about uh, custom keyboards, but you can really, really customize. You can you can spend a lot mm -hmm. of money on on custom switches and the frame and keypads as well. Uh, keycaps. Keycaps. Yes. So what I'm standing with here is it's a prototype. A prototype of our 65. Yeah. So notice how small this is compared to uh, full size here. It's tiny. Yes, and it, it's because uh, we designed this one for for FPS gamers in mind. It's always what we go back to when whenever we design our peripherals or gamers. Uh, and a lot of the time you see people with small desks and they in Counter Strike you have big arm movement. Because of the low sensitivity of mice, yeah. mouse in settings. In FPS games, yeah. yeah. Um, but there's also some players who basically have high sensitivity, but we just want to try to accommodate as many mm. as possible. So we have both a TKO and a smaller size. Yeah. It really depends on what is your user case. Do you need the F well or don't, do you need the, the extra TKO? Yeah. Um, and do you use it? So if you don't use it, you could go smaller. Yeah. So this is what you can guys can't see is how heavy this is. Now it actually has a weight mm. uh, inserted here yeah. to uh, to make it heavier. Yeah. And and he has put in some custom Pokemon. Yeah. We call keycaps. these uh, artisan keycaps. Okay. Because it's an artist who has made them. Yeah. Um, so he also has some of them here. Um, yeah. He actually want, has one here. I'm going to show this one, and I'll. I'll come back to what this is, why it looks like this. Yeah. He actually has one that's just like a neat little zombie mm. shark. So for keycaps, as well as there's many different kinds of switches, there's a lot of different kinds of keycaps, mm -hmm. even on the sizing, uh, on the material, and on the, the profile is what we call them. So you can have something like a cherry profile, which is the, the normal one, mm. uh, or OEM profile, which is the one you see in most uh, OEMs, which is like uh, what we are doing. Uh, yeah. Steel series and uh, way cells is also using OEM uh, profile, which is a little bit higher, okay. taller than a cherry profile. There are so many different like size cases mm -hmm. and and also different layouts and stuff like that. So so what we are touching is just the surface of yeah. this uh, surprisingly deep subject. Yes, as a PM, I always look at the user cases. So in my user case, I have these switches as silent. Yeah because these are the switches I use the most when I play games, even at night, so they don't make any sound. Right, okay. But I even have normal sounding because I like this sound when I'm just typing. What, so it has so both? So this one actually has three kinds of switches in it. In the same case? In, in the, the same, same case. case because wow. of my user case. Okay. So these over here, they are a, a third kinds one, uh -huh. the, the control and shift, because that's my pinky that I use for shift walking uh -huh. or, or crouching in, in Valorant. Wow. And they have to be light so I can, so it doesn't strain on my little, pink, uh, little finger. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, so you're taking... I'm taking it to the next level. Wow. Yeah, next level, yeah? like, and, and, and there's <laughs> also like, a, this is your keyboard, right? This is my keyboard. And there's a, something about the, the space keypad. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's actually uh, not angled. Uh, it's reversed. Reversed, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you, why is that? Because of the way I have my hand on my keyboard. So it's easier so to uh, like tap it with the... It's easier for my thumb to just rest yeah. on it. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah, so if you reverse it, you might have uh, this is also with us. Yeah, um, I saw that. Okay, we haven't really talked about this other than the fact there's an awesome zombie shark up here. Mm -hmm. This is a, a split keyboard. Yeah. So there are some different layouts in keyboards as well. This is very ergonomic, right? Yeah. For regular typing? For regular typing, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so is this a keyboard you would see for gaming? Well, again, when we go back to the gaming aspect of it, do you have a keyboard that can put in the input? for your games at a low delay, then it doesn't matter. Okay, right. Yeah. So usually the Ergo ones, um, they are being used for people who types a lot because there's um, 
just a natural way that you hold your hands. Right. So the ergo ones, as you see it, it it's a little bit shaped outwards, mm -hmm. and your hands actually goes inwards like this. Yeah. So it's just to save on your wrist. All right. Okay. So it doesn't hurt as much as when you have to type it in together, which is one of the downsides of a small keyboard because yeah. you have to put your hands so close together. Really? Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes that makes sense. Mm. The only reason why these are like misaligned in a, in a V-shape of kind of way, like, yeah. is because of the old ways of making keyboards. Since the old way of making keyboards, which was mechanical, you had like a, a metal spring, so when you click that, it, it went up and didn't make the letter. Like an old typewriter. Like an old typewriter, yeah, that's yeah. the word, yeah. Yeah, okay. And that's why they had to be aligned, uh, shifted, okay. so there was room for all the uh, and they've kept place. that. And they kept that. Up until? Up until now. And, and we, we still do it. And we still do it. That's funny. Uh, but some people are actually experimenting with something called an autolinear, which is just straight lines yeah. all the way, because there's no re really uh, need for to have these. No. We just got used to it. So we haven't really touched on that some keyboards have extra features. This is actually not a new thing, but it's a vol volume knob that we yes. see on some keys, yes. which is also interchangeable. So some people actually go and make different kinds of wow. knobs for this. Wow, okay. Um, you have macro keys, yeah. which is an extra set of keycaps which you can program so for different I, things. Actually, bef uh, before I started working here, I had a really, really old keyboard with ha which had like uh, 12 macro keys on, on this side, and mm -hmm. another set of macro keys over the uh, function keys up here. Yeah. And I didn't use them at all. I just had this really, really, really big keyboard. I actually that... used one. I actually used the macro keys for World of Warcraft back then. Yeah, because that would make sense. Yeah. So one of, the, one of the most important features for me at least is the fact that I have access to, to audio control mm -hmm. on my keyboard. And, and in this case, you have access to mute and turn the volume up and down. Now we are slowly creeping towards the part where I would usually say that this is all up to personal preference. But since we are gamers and we mostly talk to gamers, we have some things that are more optimal for gamers. As we mentioned before, having a smaller keyboard allows you to have more space for your mouse if you're playing FPS games. So that's probably so that's something we would probably recommend looking at mm -hmm. the smaller keyboards if you are an FPS gamer. Also, as you mentioned, there are some uh, switches that have better uh, feedback for certain games. So you mentioned the yeah. FPS games have probably benefits more from tactile or uh, the noisy uh, like white switches like these ones. Again, it's down to preference, it's just my preference. Yeah. I like to have the tactile feedback when I play FPS games, um, but it's not a necessity. No. In, anyways, none no. of this is actually a necessity. The only necessity is, do you have something that can input your uh, intent into the computer? True, true. Yes. But we are, we are, uh, <laughs> see if we can find some small hints of things that we can suggest. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, like with most gear, we will always suggest that you try the product if you can. Mm -hmm. Come to the store and try it out. Uh, purchase it, try it and return it if you don't like it. I, I, I personally fell in love with the white uh, clicky switches of this uh, MSI uh, keyboard here, the GK50 mm -hmm. Elite. But you also mentioned that having linear switches can help you press faster if you are spam clicking mm -hmm. in some games. In some games, League of Legends, one of them. Yes, I play Dota. Should I be using a different than? Would I actually benefit from them? Oh. You won't know. No. <laughs> but speak, speaking of, uh, of having no friends to play with, uh, having a uh, this very very noisy keyboard can actually also uh, have an impact on the uh, audio feedback in your microphone. So yeah. when when playing with other people. Uh, it's also worth noting how much of the sound that your microphone is picking up and if it's actually a nuisance to your teammates. Mm -hmm. I have this <laughs> keyboard at home as well, very noisy. So there are some prefer uh, some recommendations towards gamers, mm -hmm. but as you mentioned, this is all up to personal preference. Very much comes down to how it feels, 
what kind of caps you like, if you have respect for your uh, money. Oh yeah, that's actually a subject that we didn't touch. Be careful about custom keyboards, yes. they are expensive and they it's a... Can be very expensive. You can yes. get cheap custom keyboards uh, and you can get very, very expensive custom keyboards. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm don't even dare to ask how much this one costs. It looks very simple, but it's probably the most expensive no, one. No, th that's, uh, that's the cheapest one. That's the I cheapest think this one? is uh, three and a half thousand uh, Danish crowns. Oh, that's the cheapest one for three and a half thousand. I think we are closing in at six thousand with this one. So, uh, so, uh, so yeah. So to recap, there's actually nothing to recap. I just really wanted to make that pun before finishing this video thank you so much for watching our video on keyboards i hope you you liked it uh, if you have any questions about this or uh, stuff in life in general mm -hmm. please write them in the comments down below and if you like the video give it a like if you want to see more of these videos press the subscribe button uh, or just send us a, us a virtual high five if you don't <laughs> like subscribing to stuff i right? we respect that bye bye, -bye.